And when I first started reading YA, I was reading more uh, dystopian because that was the boom of the Hunger Games. Everyone I knew was reading them. Uh, didn't matter how old they were. And like, you know, I was 22 at the time. But um, it was kind of the more books that I read in the genre that I enjoyed, the more I started to kind of understand how people wrote these books and um, how they paced them and how the characters spoke and like what kind of things worked. Then kind of in my second book, when I, when I started writing that, then I really understood, okay, this is how you submit your book to agents and this is how they review it. And this is what I need to do. These like pitch contests online and all of this like rich world of like how to publish a book. I, that's kind of when I started falling in love with that outside of even being a writer. And that's kind of why I ended up here um, it, working in book publishing as well as, um, as writing. Yeah, I feel like every, um, every block that I get is kind of a different, it takes a different technique to get rid of it. It's, um, it's kind of funny like that. There's no like one way to get rid of writer's block. I've been writing all day or, you know, I wrote all day yesterday. I don't want to write today. There's that to deal with. Then, you know, this current pandemic that we're in, it's really hard. You, you need that social interaction to um, just kind of distract you to kind of unlock creativity you need some downtime you need to you know I like to play video games or you know watch tv with my husband or anything and I just like you need that sometimes to really like lighten the pressure um, but I think if you're if you're afraid of writing something that's that's also something different um because I've definitely been in that position before I've been afraid that like what I'm writing is too ambitious it's like too big of a project. Like I don't, I need to wait until I'm a better writer to, to tackle that or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super valid, but you don't know until you try. It's worth forcing yourself to sit down because sometimes you're scared of like, of I guess rejection from the computer or rejection from yourself. Um, when the only way to really confront that is to like do it and see, you can start with something bad. And I mean, it's not even bad, but like something that you feel is bad and then you make it better and better. And then one day it's like, okay, this is, this is what I wanted. I think pretty much every perspective character that I write, like, um, like in first person, like the, the main character, it's, I mean, it's going to represent kind of who I am as a person because I don't think, I don't like to reach outside of, like, I'm not going to tell you know, queer black women's story. Um, but I think that you also have to write with, you know, knowing, like reflecting the world around us. Um, and like that, you have to kind of understand the, the characters that you are writing. Um, and so part of that is, you know, when you're thinking of these characters, like thinking of the stereotypes that come with them and like how you could um, either, how you're feeding into them or how you're subverting them. If you're going to try to be representative of a community, you have to make sure that they're reading it as well. Um, it can't just be you kind of coming up with it from your brain, because your brain is probably going to come up with it from other media that you've seen, and other media you've seen is probably not great, um, especially if it's in the past. So, I mean, you just have to be careful and be thoughtful and, like, always be intentional with the things you do you don't want to take the easy way out and not sh share diversity because you're scared or like you know, something like that, which I think is what, um, what used to happen a lot was either, you know, you get these stories that were not, um, that were not very diverse. And that was kind of the, the reason for it. It was like, oh, I don't know. It's like, that's not, it's not, it's not the worst. It's not the worst excuse, but it's also not the best. The only piece of advice that I like really cling to is like, keep trying like I got I think um I think 90 rejections from different agents between two different books which is a lot of like people saying no at you when your books get sent to an editor from like by an agent you feel like it's like okay one yes and I have a book deal like my book's gonna be on shelves if I just get that one yes and then you get 84 no's and it's like it can be really crushing the only thing with any kind of writing even if you're writing something you're like this isn't working this is like I'm not I can't do this anymore, whatever. Maybe that's true, maybe you can't do it right now and like you just like put it aside, but always like feel like you should come back to it or at least try and like keep trying, try a different angle. Like there's so many times I've started a chapter and been like, this is the worst chapter ever. 
and then I rewrite the chapter from a different perspective or angle and it's like oh finally this is why or I like set this five minutes too late like I needed this conversation to start or some little silly things that can just completely re-energize yourself like just like, keep trying.